Hey everyone, my name is Olga Chebikina. Today we continue the interview with Polina Fedotenkova, our channel expert and professional organizer. Polina, my dear, hello again. Let's start with some examples, like what kind of requests can you approach the organizer with, the method of placements, what problems exist in the ancestral systems that affect our lives. What are the most common requests and problems they usually come with? They mostly come with a crew. We all want love and money. Yeah? Yeah, love and money. Sometimes when health problems start, everyone still wants love and money. And here, either I can't find any partner relationships or I've already met them, but the intimacy, sexuality and attraction vanish. And I always say, please, prior to getting divorced, come to a session because it appears to us that we are establishing a relationship with a partner and we have not even seen him at all. So, like we're looking at the world, for example, through a mother's eyes and we repeat the same fate. If mom had a complaint about men or distrust or there was a topic of violence in the family, then we look at this story. And when you come out of the formation, the guy is the same, but everything changes completely. Honestly, if it weren't for the arrangements, I would have divorced like 10 times already. Because my speakers, they ain't positive. If something goes wrong, I feel like leaving without figuring it out. Close the door. Say goodbye. That's it. Don't want to... This is a kid's position to flee. Who are we fleeing? Can't flee from ourselves. And that's why, thanks to therapy, right now, after 10 years of marriage, I understand that there is such a level of tenderness, closeness, and love that wasn't even present at the beginning of our relationship. So like you can evolve together. This is the filter of your mother or father's perspective. When they were there, God forbid, grandma got raped. Somewhere she must have been hiding something. The child was illegitimate, unrecognized, and rejected in that situation. This is all depending on us. And we, you know, what a distortion until our gaze reaches a person and comes back here through him again. Which generations have an impact on us? How deep can you perceive? In one setup, we went 12 generations back. This is a story that has been passed down from generation to generation. So in certain families, it began and then simply continued to expand. Most frequently, it is three generations. Parents, grandparents are the main key players in the family. It's written in your blood. That's just how it goes. That's how it was with someone else. And you just follow these scripts. Is it safe to change the script? You know, it's like that movie, The Butterfly Effect. When you mess with the past and then it just hits you like an avalanche, your fate changes critically and never for the better. We don't change the past, but rather we make peace with it instead. How do these entanglements happen when there is disagreement with the ancestor's fate? When we feel sorry and it seems like poor unhappy grandmother, but there is no respect in pity, as if we devalue her experience. It's like she lived somehow wrong. Yeah, sure. And the setups allow you to recognize this. Granny, thanks for your wisdom for life. Everything you did, you did it right because I'm alive now, otherwise I wouldn't be. And we acknowledge, and then we truly gain the freedom not to repeat anymore. She's already been through it, we don't need to repeat it. In fact, our forefathers, they endured a challenging experience, a difficult destiny, but they desired the continuity of the family so that we could experience happiness and good health. Otherwise, what was the point of all this anyway? That's why it's really important for us to let go of this. And when we acknowledge this contribution, we'll see that there's so much power, so much love there. Birth programs start when we leave our place, right on the topic of pity. That takes us off our game when we don't acknowledge it. Or, for example, when there's criticism, condemnation, or even concern. The sense of duty often comes into play, for example, when it comes to our parents feeling like I should, as a daughter, I should. No doubt you're already standing still, mom for mom or dad for mom. If you financially support your parents out of a sense of duty, that's the responsibility of an elder man. So you are standing in grandpa's place. What kind of sexuality and femininity can there be if you live in the middle of nowhere? And, well, health goes there as well, money goes there as well. And here we even receive our own bonuses, needs, and a sense of our own significance. But we're not living our own life. It's been proven a long time ago that it's very beneficial to nurse your own wounds, all your own problems. Of course, you're such a do-gooder, handing out money to everyone, taking care of everyone. Provide me with some gratitude in return. Look at me, I am such a smarty pants. It takes a lot more guts to say, no, mom, do it yourself. You can still do it. I'll help you here. But try it yourself, dad. Do it on your own, please, if you can. And also, what you're saying with what kind of requests do the money come? Conditional relationships. 
You come in and think you'll understand the social distribution of roles in the team, job responsibilities, or maybe it's about choosing a path, a calling. And it turns out there was a glitch in the ancestral system in your grandmother's lineage. That's why you can't be in your place, can't be fulfilled. We're tackling the problem from a different angle. I know you studied in France. Please tell me, are there any schools that solely focus on formations? Are there any national peculiarities or is it such a universal system that the whole world uses? Overall, this is a universal system and it's made world famous by Bert Hellinger. I also studied using Bert Hellinger's methods. This is Germany. Then I studied for three years in France. Other mentors also have their own unique style, some specific protocols. But overall, the skill of a layout designer lies in feeling the field so that you don't work through your ego. Just trust Put it in a clean, right field so that this situation simply manifests itself, what is hidden. Deputies will share all. You must heed subtle signals. Currently, the workload during my trip to Peru, I also gained knowledge from healers, other masters. The level of work allows us to sometimes peek into past lives because it's not always just about our family, but sometimes it's our own karmic history that stretches from life to life and we can also work with it. The most frequent feedback we received on our previous release was regarding the way individuals behave from a childish perspective. I feel like a child. This problem of female infantilism, it is more acute in women compared to men, for example. Do you see her as very strongly expressed? From what I can gather from the interview snippet, the thing that resonated the most was when women saw that I have a childlike perspective on life. This is everywhere. And actually right now, what's happening right now, these are some tough events in the world. It's the global maturing of humanity. We need this because everyone is playing the victim and waiting for something else that we are owed. Either through knowledge or through suffering, one can grow up. We don't want to learn the hard way, so we'll have to suffer. But that's how growth happens. So this phrase, can I come in? That is what children ask. Can I go out? I do not know. I am unable to do it. I can't wrap my head around cryptocurrency, this investment. That's just childish. And when we're in a child's position, big money won't come. It's going to be just chump change, you know? All projects are significant closed. The partnership is interesting but closed. There will always be children, parents, background stories there. Working a lot with a child's perspective, for example, I have a fear of expressing myself. Do adults not feel embarrassed? No shame. He's out, gaining experience, making deals, no issue with it. But our kids section is like, you know, asking itself, like, when I'm scared, how old am I now in this part of mine? And we'll see that not so much as in the passport. And we'll see ourselves as a 12-year-old girl who's afraid of judgment or not being accepted. However, what did I unearth in my role as a set designer? Frequently, this role is linked to the presence of deceased children, either from the previous mother, the current mother, or the grandmother, particularly if there is a tragic backstory. And how does this script work? So the child goes to the location where the mother's attention is focused. You see, there is nobody home. She is just somewhere out there. Mom is out there. And where could she be? In a conflict with her husband, offended by her own mother, or in pain over her first child, even if this pain is repressed. And the child who is born after, he stands as if in place of this. And then growing up, such a state of, I don't know what to do. I have no connection with my energy, my life. And there's a whole lot of infantilism in this children's part as if we're living someone else's childhood fate. I simply desire to share with women who have their unborn children a straightforward healing practice so that there will not be this problem for your children, for your family system, and to ensure a smooth and healthy experience for all involved. The problem occurs when the unborn are excluded, like they were forgotten, like they never existed. So it was like really painful. It's kind of a taboo topic. And then there will definitely be a mix-up. All we need to do is just draw ourselves on a piece of paper Everyone here is older, second, third, fourth. For instance, the first one was an abortion, the second one was a miscarriage, and the third one was born. Important for him to know his third. Mark with small cross all who weren't born. Born a girl like small circle, while born a boy like small square. And you place your pinky finger on the initial cross. You are my eldest child. I apologize that you were not born. I can't change our past anymore, but now I see you as my own child. I accept you. There's a place for you in my heart and in our family. And I'll do something nice for you in memory. And we can plant a tree in memory of this child. That is, give this life again. We can donate money to charity. That is, give it a place. Put your finger on the second one. You're my second child. 
And then on the third finger, which was born, for example, a daughter, you state that you are my third daughter, that you were born and that you have your own position within our family as well as in my heart. You will feel it yourself when you reach that age. Parents do not apologize to their children for abortions. That's just the parents' decision. We shouldn't feel guilty towards our children for this. This is our solution, our responsibility. However, we can inform them that there were two children prior to your arrival. You're the third, my dear, but I love each of you in my own unique way. In order for an individual to live their life without reiterating these narratives, it is crucial for us. A lot of times, nobody really knows about it, and you can't admit it to anyone. Once I had a conversation like that, and girls don't even tell the gynecologist when the doctor asks about the type of delivery or the type of pregnancy. They don't admit it because it's so embarrassing there. And there are whole, it turns out that you can do this work on your own with yourself. Here you do not involve any other individual and you work through all of this. I understand there is a challenging aspect here. Proceed and utilize this tool if you have such a task. And if you are acquainted with a female individual who is capable of providing assistance in this matter, kindly recommend her to engage in doing so. Sometimes this unrecognized unborn child becomes the cause of rifts in a couple because when it went quiet and it's like the woman takes it upon herself to make this decision, but it's always a decision of two people. And it is truly important in a relationship to share that pain and that responsibility. Yes, I am a mother, but there is a father. But I also want us, as women, to tune in, understanding our responsibility. After all, entering into a relationship with a man and making the decision to have a child, the responsibility should be 100% on me. Regardless of the circumstances, I am prepared to single-handedly raise him, and I hold no anticipations regarding his future. Because if I have an expectation that he owes me something, it is merely my childish position, and life will heal me from it through trauma and the lessons it brings. I suddenly feel like my setup isn't working, he doesn't owe me anything, and he'll be the one to heal me from this situation. And here's the thing, it's crucial to understand that in terms of setups, I see many stories where there's a problem with money and implementation. It's consistently the father figure and the paternal line. Always, always without exception. So either the father died early, or he was divorced, or he was a drinker, and the mother, for example, devalued him. And what's important to understand is that I have the right to divorce my husband. There's no need to stay in a marriage for the sake of the children. So if nothing else binds you together, if we're keeping the marriage for the sake of the children, then we're basically shifting this burden of responsibility onto the children. We drew them a roadmap and made a kick-ass program. Suck it up, buttercup. Your program is a pushover. Love is not mandatory. You gotta. So like, that's really tough later on. But my responsibility as a mother is to maintain the authority and influence of the father figure. Yeah, sure. And not to underestimate it. Even if he does not behave appropriately, it's my own damn fault for choosing a guy like that. Or he became like this next to me. My responsibility as a mother is to say, yes, right now, dad can't give you a lot of love, but he loves you, but he loves you, I'm sure. And he's got some decent qualities, for instance, like charisma, sense of humor, and you have the same qualities as your father. And that's when we give wings to our children. Imagine this, I'm going to tell you, your dad is a loser. Good thing I got divorced and he can't choose another father anymore. You selected him and that is our only obligation. So do not ruin the lives of children. And indeed, a child frequently perceives their father through the perspective of their mother's eyes. If mother respects, he has got respect. If your mother is devaluing you, fortunately there is therapy. Can everything be fixed? You can fix anything. Absolutely, no exceptions. Another topic of parent-child relationships, it's definitely never-ending. Discussed partially in the first episode, when adult children, parents are aging and we assume a parental position in relation to our parents. Is there another expression, they often say it now, that you should be not a face but rather a back to your parent because you are looking into the future? If you're a face, then you're looking into the past. Is that right? That's right. How to properly be a good, socially responsible, grown-up child to your parent when they are already weak and you are taking care of them there in my understanding, maybe I'm wrong. You should provide them with the appropriate comfort, care, and everything else there. People become parents to their own parents. That's it. Everything is over now. Our parents are running out of resources. We're putting a stop to this nonsense, and we start having problems with our spouses, with money, with health. The system is totally crashing, and here we can help. Staying in a position not of a child anymore, we are not kids anymore, but daughters. 
So I'm asking, mom, I want to send you to a sanatorium. Do you want to relax? She's like, nah, I don't want to. All right, quit bugging me, mom. The hierarchy of resource distribution is very important. First, I got to take care of myself. Then I provide my partner with attention and energy. If I wake up and have already rushed to see my mom or already rushed to work, my life will indicate that I am making a mistake. Conflicts will start, leaks will be everywhere. But if I woke up and first gave myself... Now this is a morning rule. When I wake up at least seven minutes earlier than my husband and son, and sometimes I give myself some meditation, and sometimes just lie down like a star, really feel myself, then I hand it over to my spouse, not my child. In the beginning, it is the offspring who receives it, and only after that, the business, and only after that, the parents. Then everyone will be in their places. And if I haven't been on vacation myself, if I have a conflict with my husband, if I have a business failure, but I rush to take care of my mom, it's my sense of importance, my trauma, I'm living from my grandfather again. And life will keep reminding me about it. How to figure out right or wrong, take a look at your life. And she'll tell you straight up whether it's right or wrong. If you've got no energy, no money, no happy relationships, something ain't working. Go see a good chiropractor in your city and just give it a try. Mm -hmm.